car meets are interesting. I think a lot of them get a bad rap because car culture, by its very nature, is contradictory. On the one hand, it's inclusive, but it's also capable of gatekeeping exclusionary attitudes. It's exhibitionist in the way cars are paraded for the admiration of others, but it's also a competitive and defensive field. Bear witness to the fruits of my efforts, but also keep her name out of your mouth. Check out my Buick Grand National, but also, your Buick Grand National isn't cooler than my Buick Grand National, so you know what? You can go eat a bowl of dicks with no milk. People can act up at car meets, do burnouts and rev their engines to a decibel point beyond what the naked human ear can withstand. People can act like jerks, they can act judgmental, they can act like they own the place, they can act like they're the only ones who deserve to be there. But by the same token, people can be welcoming, excitable, interesting, and interested. Because car meets offer as wide a variety of personalities as they do cars and opportunities. For every meet that gets broken up by the cops because the community is making business owners nervous, for every meet that ends in people throwing hands behind the Dunkin' Donuts over whether the Fairmount counts as a Fox body, despite not being a Mustang, never mind that it predates the Fox body Mustang by at least a year. For every single one of those disastrous meets, there's a car meet that not only serves as reaffirmation of why you love cars in the first place, but as confirmation that people are out there who like the same things as you, and that for all the anxiety and uncertainty that exists in this world, those people can be pretty damn cool. So yeah, this is about people. But it's also about cars. This is about fun. This is a defense of car meets. For some, car meets are the debutante ball for the 1964 and a half Mustang that's been under a car cover all winter. For the people who love peacocking with their new aftermarket exhaust, or placing placards on the window of a vintage Bel Air to promote their restoration business, their job to serve as curator for a long-forgotten status quo. But it's also for people mutually bonded by an interest in cars, even if the interest doesn't extend past that single day. Hey, if you think cars are cool, come on down, even if you don't have one yourself. Sure, it's not all peace and love and harmony in the car community, but then where is it peace, love, and harmony in any community? I mean, it's part and parcel of being part of any fandom or liking anything. People are going to have arguments, they're going to have debates, they're going to have disagreements. There are people you'll love talking to, there are others you'll never want to speak to again. That's just how it is when you're into stuff. But it would also be a cartoonish mischaracterization to suggest that you're automatically walking into the lion's den any time you come to a car meet. And yet, there's an aspect of intimidation to it. The size, the crowds, the people with their cameras out, the ones who don't want you getting too close. Even if you don't have social anxiety, it can be a struggle to muster up the courage to go to a meet in the first place, because there's this preconceived notion of how your presence will be received, that you won't be welcomed, that if you don't know enough about cars, you'll be met with hostility, or if you're a woman, you'll be met as a hanger-on, someone who couldn't possibly like cars or want to be there of her own accord. Oh, where's your boyfriend, sweetheart? Oh, look at her, some girl trying to act like she's getting the cars just to get men. You should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed. You should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed of yourself. I can't pretend that some of those terrible, disgusting attitudes don't exist. But every community has its bad apples. Yet small-minded attitudes needn't represent the community at large. An overripe banana on its own is pretty gross, but when it's in banana bread, you hardly notice, because that one banana isn't representative of the entire loaf of bread. The point here is to give car meets a shot, because you never know what could happen, you never know who you'll meet. And this sort of brings me around to my thesis for this entire video, which is an aspect of car meets that I think a lot of people overlook, even those who go to car meets frequently. It's an opportunity to socialize as an adult. 
Not just to see cars up close that you've only ever seen online, but to meet new people who share the same interests in a relatively controlled environment. Because let's face it, once you hit adulthood, you sort of lose the structures that allowed you to make friends in the first place. So that if you don't like your co-workers, and you're not still in touch with people from your youth, you have to find other avenues to meet people. Going online is one, and organized events such as car meets are another. But no matter the method, making friends can be tricky if you're not a naturally gregarious person. There are different phases of socialization in life, and in each one you'll have friends of a type that you'll never have again. The ones you build pillow forts with during sleepovers when you're eight. The ones you ride bikes with every summer till sundown when you're twelve. The ones you break curfew with when you're sixteen. Embattled kinship. That sense that because you were put in this crucible called high school together, you're navigating all the same problems. The acne, the inability to get a date, the standoffish relationship with your parents, the dream of a driver's license, first jobs, academic pressure, punishments, anxiety, and the idea that somehow you're going to magically have it all figured out once you've crossed the threshold into adulthood. When I was a teenager, I literally thought every single problem in my life would be solved with a car. Every girl would suddenly want me. Any heartbreak could be solved by a long, late-night drive just listening to music, listening to Call and Answer by Bare Naked Ladies, by listening to The Color and the Shape, by looking up at February stars, while listening to February stars. Just listening to anything. And even though I wasn't the one driving... That's exactly what me and my best friend Taylor used to do. We'd drive around with a camcorder on the dash, making video diaries and talking about our lives, our futures, everything we wanted, things that seemed so impossibly far out of reach. Because we were teenagers and we were imperfect, and there seemed to be no change on the horizon. I think in some ways that's kind of what being a teenager is, whether life is great or awkward. It's the sensation that whatever your situation is, it's never going to change. In an overly dramatic sense, if you're popular and well-liked, you feel like you're always going to be popular and well-liked. And if you're awkward and friendless, or with very few friends, then it might feel like that's a path that'll stretch on forever, when that's not always the case. So in your youth, you look for things in which to embed hope. Whether it's college, or whether it's a person, or a career, a family. For some people, it's a car. We're all imperfect, but we're arguably at our most imperfect in these years, before the accumulation of years irons the creases out of our personality, and we settle more comfortably into the type of person we are, irrespective of who it is we actually want to be. We're all capable of change, in ways both big and small. But at a foundational level, we are who we are, and we come by that foundation through those years of early life experience. It's these imperfect moments in which we're formed, alongside other imperfect people, looking for a sign that it all gets better at some point, resisting the notion that, believe it or not, good things can happen. Those formative years can feel like forever, but it isn't all that long before you pass into the next phase, where you're expected to be able to make it on your own, where you're quote-unquote free, and you have that bond to the friends with whom you discovered freedom. Some people are lucky enough to be able to maintain some of those early connections throughout their entire lives, and it's those connections we should hold on to with both hands because they're exceedingly rare in an ever-changing adulthood of friends claimed by marriage and parenthood and the manifest responsibilities of adult life that are all understandable, but no less upsetting in how they further distance you from recapturing those spent moments of your youth, those days spent in a Pontiac Trans Am or a Toyota Tercel, dreaming of a future that's closer than we ever realized. No matter what generation you belong to, cars carry memories with them. They carry feelings. Cars move us, and they move us. In my last RCR diary, I got into how different age demographics treat the privilege of driving, 
But that doesn't really get into how cars can bind people beyond just offering them the freedom to go where they want, when they want. The socialization aspect is huge, even if, in the abstract, there is a difference in the approach depending on generation. Older car enthusiasts tend to set up shop with a lawn chair, propped by their car, waiting for showgoers to come to them. To vomit admiration all over their car, or ask any number of probing questions about the nature of how their car is maintained or how it was restored. Maybe they get up to walk around, stretch their legs, look at the other classic cars on offer. But for the most part, the lawn chair is their domain, the car itself their castle. Younger people are on their feet, wandering the grounds, exercising their photography muscles, hovering over tuners, pressing the flesh, and asking the exact same questions that the lawn chair monarch has come to expect from his subjects. And you know something? Neither approach is wrong, because sometimes it's the younger people in the lawn chair and the older folks wandering around, taking photographs, asking questions. And that should be encouraged. I mean, this all goes to a broader point about how easy it can be to make sweeping generalizations about car meets. Not everybody is out here hooning. Not everybody is getting into fistfights or running people over on the way out. Sometimes a car meet is just a car meet. And there's value in going, in talking to people who share your interests in an environment organized to cater to that interest, so that you're starting off on equal footing, whether you brought something of your own or you carpooled to the meet with someone else. And again, I'm not going to pretend that every car meet is wonderful, that you won't have to deal with do-bro attitudes and people who question the manhood of a person driving something fewer than eight cylinders or making really dumb decisions that bring the police swinging by to take down license plates, ensuring the meet will never happen again. But I've gone to a lot of meets that had absolutely nothing to do with RCR. Meets on tuner culture, classic cars, roadsters, old shit boxes. And you know what? Maybe I've just been extraordinarily fortunate in the countless local meets I go to in a given year, but I haven't encountered any jerks. Most of the time, I just talk to a boomer about his trans am and run into a bunch of people who have no idea who I am. Which is not to say that I actually think I am somebody. I'm, I'm just making a broader point about car culture. No ego, no ego, none at all. I mean, I'm all right. I'm just, uh, you know what I mean. It's delightful because you don't really have to be the one doing the talking. A lot of owners are all too happy to chat your ear off. And I know that might bug some people, but personally, I love that. So for me, one of the biggest reasons to go to a car meet, it's the people. Because you might have a new community there, just waiting to count you among their number. This is pretty obvious, but yes, one of the biggest reasons to go to a car meet is the cars. Especially because a lot of these cars are models you're only seeing online rather than in person. Or maybe you see the hot rod on the road but never get to see it up close. Or maybe you only ever get to see it in your memories. In old pictures and shoeboxes in the attic. And if that's the case, well, here's your chance. And it's sort of funny in the sense that one of the things I've noticed most about how attendants approach displaying their cars is that there's very much this defensive stance. It's not a dick measuring contest, it's just there to gauge whether or not you mean ill intent. Because presenting their car is very much the same as presenting themselves. But then it's also an approach that doesn't privilege socialization because people who are there to strictly show off their car probably aren't there to really see anybody else's unless it's to compare. Which is okay, by the way. No judgments. As long as you're not hurting anybody or breaking the law, do you. But it is a fascinating difference in the sense that there seems to be this anticipated reverence for the car being presented that necessitates the owner standing by the car to soak it all in, with the little picture frame of the car and the list of specs and the little toy car that's there. And it, it's part of the charm of a car meet. I mean, I think a lot of the people there have a sense of humor about the way their cars are being presented. And even when they don't, they'll still happily talk to you about their car for the most part and if they don't want to the worst that they can say is no so what you didn't make a friend that day the guy with the barracuda decided he didn't want to talk to anybody so whatever just talk to the guy with the buick regal 
Yeah, I'll answer your questions about it. Why, yes, it is stock. It was my grandfather's for 30 years, until he left it to me and I had it restored at a shop outside Whitehall, because he'd been banging my grandmother in the back of this thing for God only knows how long, and I didn't want to have to look at the dried up aunts and uncles that never were. You gotta get the cum stains out of there somehow. You know, I had to sell my 90s Camaro to pay for all this? The kid who bought it off me is probably here, but I don't want to see whatever BS he's done to the old girl. Hey man, you got a smoke on you by any chance? It's been a really long day. And I know I'm supposed to be quitting, but, you know, my wife's not here and she doesn't really have to know. I'm Theo, by the way. Nice to meet you. And yeah, sorry, I sound like a mission giver in a GTA game, but, but that, that's just how they make them these days. That's just how they make guys these days. The ecosystem sees certain brands congregate beside one another, as if subconsciously adhering to an unwritten structure. The Mazdas over here, the trucks over there, the odd stuff and the rarities dead center to catch the most foot traffic. And oh yeah, the really expensive stuff will be in there too, in the mix. It always allows people to see the distinction between different models and the varied levels of craftsmanship and maintenance involved across generations. And yes, an element of automotive tribalism manifests in the way people hover around their cars and the cars of those with whom they arrived. The regulars who go to these meets, as if to defend against the young guns who are just here because Forza and Fast and Furious tell them cars are cool now. Classic cars are the receding hairline of car meets, in the wake of tuners becoming more and more popular popular and getting more sporty looking cars and even some trucks that kind of just show up like monsters on dualies. But hey, unless it's a judged me, it's not like anybody particularly gets involved for trophies or awards. Who cares if it's tuners and classic cars and beaters all side by side? Most car meets offer an opportunity to witness vintage and contemporary craftsmanship in the same space. For restoration enthusiasts, there's the chance to network, or having a fire lit under your ass to finally finish that project car you've been working on since last September. Yes, it's hyperbolic as hell, but a really good car meet can make you excited. Like meeting a celebrity at a comic convention, you get to see all the cars that Cash for Clunkers claimed. The cars you never thought you'd see up close again. It's like meeting somebody who you really admire. It's catching a tan under the warm, familiar sun of nostalgia. At the RCR meet, I saw an AMC Eagle just like my mother used to have when I was growing up. And to say I nearly teared up to see it isn't an exaggeration at all. It looked just like I remembered. Felt just like I remembered. Suddenly, I was back on Lancaster Avenue, on my way home from school, my brother in the back seat with me, asking if I dared him to open the car while we were driving. I remember my mother losing her mind when she heard the rush of air entering the car. I remember all the beautiful, sunny days we spent indoors on punishment as a result. And all the road trips we took to visit my Theo Johnny in New Jersey, listening to the Beach Boys on the radio. The time I vomited up mac and cheese in the back seat from a combination of motion sickness and eating too fast. The trips to the drive-in theater to watch movies I can't remember because it wasn't really about the movie. It was about the experience of being in a car and tuning to the right station and watching an entire feature-length film in the approximated comfort and privacy of your own home. Because even though it's not home, to a kid, that's really what a car is the approximation of. You can't recapture those moments, but it's okay to revisit them. It's okay for them to bubble to the surface unsolicited. Because it just feels good. And that's what nostalgia can do. That's what cars can do. That's what car meets can do. And if you have someone really inviting, they might even let you drive their car or take you on a ride. And then a car meet becomes more of a hands-on experience, a sensation you can take with you when it's all over. Everybody likes what they like, and it's okay to be impressed by even the most mundane offerings, whether it's a Plymouth Voyager or an early 90s Dodge Daytona. Who cares? I get it, we're a snarky channel, but don't let me, don't let people at a car meet, don't let anyone make you feel bad for liking what you like. Because they're not you. There's only one you. And nobody else gets to tell you what you like. People can have disagreements, but... Opinions are always subjective. I mean, in your normal life, you might catch hell for being a gearhead. 
that guy or girl who likes cars and who's treated as if they have no other personality beyond that. But a car meet can be the reaffirmation of your fandom, your love for cars. Because there are tons of us. And especially for someone who loves automotive history like myself, car meets are a great chance to take a more active, up-close appreciation for the evolution of the automobile. And that in itself is pretty damn cool. Look, competition can be fun, and sometimes the competitive aspect can be a huge part of the fun of a car meet, provided you're responsible about showing off. I'm not talking about drag racing off the meeting grounds or throwing a car up on a dyno to see who's beefier. In a very car cruise kind of way, it can be fun if the meet you're attending has an awards aspect to it. I know that's more of a car show or car cruise thing, but it happens at meets sometimes too. And there's a certain appeal to pitting your creativity, engineering, and ingenuity against other enthusiasts. The fun of these is that it's not some sort of concours d'elegance where people are expected to have infinite money to dump into a car. Instead, you get people who get creative. And in response is a more modest criteria for what constitutes an award winner. With awards for best unfinished car, best graphics, most unique modification, any number of random awards. When we did the RCR meet, we had no intention of giving out awards, but then we got asked by so many people about when we were doing awards. And so, screw it, I guess we're doing awards now. And it ended up being one of the more fun aspects of the meet, because everyone was really cool about it. Nobody getting into debates over what should have won which award. Just everybody high-fiving and shaking hands and congratulating each other and laughing and generally having a good time and recognizing that an impromptu award hastily drawn onto a paper plate isn't worth getting upset over. Without further delay, we are here come the paper plate awards. It's the Nick Grimmett Opponent Award, and it goes to the 1984 AMC Eagle. I have no idea who owns it, but God bless you for bringing it here, because that's my dream car. Yeah! This next award uh, almost deserves its own baseline. <laughs> the award is called Best Winga Dinga. A part of that uh, fills every criteria for California cheeseburgers and the best of the Eagles mix. The award goes to Jim Shulman and his not, oh, excuse me. Oh, no, 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 no. 1957 Dodge Custom Royal. This next award, I was talking to the owner early. They showed up early, early for this event. And um, again, I'm sorry I'm balking on your name, but I'm looking over, over there, and it is the Best New Balance Sneakers Award. <laughs> and it goes to the early, not, early 90s Blue Corvette C4. Best New Balance. Yeah. Okay, this one is similar to Legal in Florida but slightly different. It's called, You Came Here in That? <laughs> Subtext, I know a guy who does inspections. <laughs> it goes to Devin in his mostly 1990 MX-5. Yeah! I thought there would be a lot more bro dozers coming here, but in fact there are not, so it's kind of difficult to select uh, the best fan of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, best pickup truck. And that goes to Ryan and his 1992 Jeep Comanche. Yeah! And lastly, it is the version of our best in show, or the most regular, it goes to Austin and his 1993 Dodge Caravan <laughs> with a five-speed. The most <laughs> regular caravan.
Thank you so much for coming to the RCR Car Meet 2019. We completely packed this parking lot. Uh, I know some people have quite a ways to go, but the roads here are pretty nice on Sundays. Uh, we will be completely vacating uh, this place in about 50 minutes. So I'll be hanging out to uh, take pictures. We'll be here. Did you want to do like I don't know. There may be too many people to effectively do a group photo. But we, we almost have to have like roof access to this place or something like that. So I guess it's probably not going to be. Uh, we have a we have a guy with a drone here. So uh, tell you what, you guys take uh, relax for like 15 minutes, and we'll make another announcement, and we'll gather for a group photo and then call it night. How's that? But even if you don't have something special, bring it anyway. I know some people at car meets can be dicks, but it's sort of like an open mic night. Most people want to root for you. It's not like people want to see a disaster. They want to like what you brought. So I don't think people show up to car meets to inherently look for flaws, even if they do have a tendency to want to make comparisons, or even if they do end up looking for flaws. Maybe I'm just too naive and I have too much faith in people, but I really don't think people go there intending to be jerks. Sometimes circumstances and situations just make them that way. And that's why I'd recommend looking up car meets in your area and finding out which ones have a good reputation for being really well run and well organized and not having a tolerance for people who cause trouble or make a scene. Because everyone should get to have this experience without worrying that some jerk is going to come along and ruin it all for everybody. But back to awards. Even if you don't have a dog in the fight, it can be fun just to see which cars get singled out as special, because maybe it's something you overlooked, or maybe it's something you didn't see as particularly noteworthy, but something for which you find a new appreciation when seeing it through the eyes of others. Competition doesn't have to be about who wins or who loses. It can be about discovering a new respect for what came before, and what continues to be. Kind of an offshoot of the previous category is photography. Whether you go to a brand-specific car meet or a non-specific cruise, whether it's the Stance Nation out in full force or Franken cars and rat rods in their manifest splendor. Car meets are a prime opportunity to put that Nikon or Canon or GoPro or drone to use. Or whatever camera you use, really. Even if it's your phone. Because in most cases, people expect that their cars are going to be photographed. And if you're sort of shy, it can be used to start a conversation, provided the owner or another enthusiast or even another photographer notes your interest in the car. It's something over which people can commiserate. What equipment are you using? What do you like so far? How long have you been doing this? May I see your photos? Do you want to look at mine? Even if your instinct is to hide behind the camera, a car meet can bring out the conversationalist in you that you didn't know existed. And beyond socializing, it's an opportunity to hone your craft, to get practice adjusting exposure and aperture and all those other things I know absolutely nothing about because I just point the camera and shoot. And if you already are a pro at your craft, it can be another networking opportunity, even to the car owner. I mean, seriously, maybe you want professional photographs of your car, or you and your car, and maybe you'll be able to work out some sort of deal with a proper photographer. I know plenty of car meets that have pinup models there who will model with your car, and you can get a photo taken that way, maybe get a calendar made out of it. Or maybe there's a replica car from a famous movie or TV show. Maybe it's the Mystery Machine or the Batmobile or Kit from Knight Rider. And for a small fee, you can get a picture with those cars. That could be something that could be a nice little souvenir, especially if you're bringing kids to the car meet. And sure, you'll have people who don't want pictures taken at all. People who take issue with any, but really another plane? People who take issue with anybody who photographs their car, and I get it, that's their baby. But photography, for the most part, is about appreciation. Because cars aren't too far off from any other sort of man-made creation. They have the qualities of art, and the subjective beauty to which art aspires. 
How does a kid grow up being into cars? I would imagine a lot of it has to do with being raised around cars and recognizing them not only for their utility, but for their intrinsic beauty and the memories they engender. Car meets are an opportunity to bring out the family. Show your kids the types of cars you grew up with, the types of cars that are popular now, and the cars that might offer a window into the future of the automotive industry, depending on the type of meet you're taking them to. You can even do the aforementioned replica car thing. I mean, I'm sure a lot of kids would love to get into, like, a Batmobile or a Jeep Wrangler that's got Jurassic Park markings all over it, or maybe, like, an Ecto-1, if somebody brings a replica Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters. You know what I mean. Bring the kids and stoke their enthusiasm for cars, or go to keep your own enthusiasm kindled. Either way, make an afternoon of it. And this is not to say that you should force your interests on your kid, you know? They're going to be their own person, they're going to like what they like. But in trying to seek common ground with them, you're sort of telling them that you care, you know? Because you want them to see the things that interest you, and in a way I think it helps you feel closer. I mean, you never know which moments your kids, nieces, nephews, whoever, you never know what moments they're going to remember. Maybe this is the type of experience that they carry into their adulthood. Even if it's not, it's generally good to give kids a wide range of different experiences and different perspectives. Teach them to respect cars. Again, not just for their function, but for their quotidian beauty and their awesome power. To educate them on different types of cars, the different ways in which they move and in which they work. Why some are not around anymore. Use the car meet to illustrate the responsibility of being a motorist, or the responsibility of maintaining a car and abiding by the rules of the road, and of public meets such as this one. Even if they grow up without caring a single loaf about direct injection, they'll understand why cars are a big deal, why they mean what they mean to people. Because I also believe, I truly believe, that it's important for kids to see adults who have an enthusiasm for something that mirrors their own enthusiasm for the things that they like. Because it instills that, at any age, it's okay to like things. They're going to catch a lot of hell growing up for liking what they like, no matter what it is they like. So teach them that it's okay to like things, as long as they aren't hurting anybody as long as they aren't breaking the law, as long as it's all in good fun. Even if it's not cars, it's a place to start. And even if it's not a learning experience, a car meet can still be a memory you share for longer than the meet itself. And vice versa, because even if it's not a memory that you cherish forever, it can still be an educational learning experience. I used to take my nephew to the service truck car meets when he was a baby. Well, toddler, but still. You know, they had all sorts of fire trucks there of different years and makes and models, and they had ambulances, and they had school buses, and they showed the effects the Jaws of Life had on a car. And he always thought it was really cool, and for literal years after that, he would talk about wanting to be a fireman. And it's weird, because I never asked him if that's still the case, but um, he still loves cars, and he still has... a an even more expensive taste in cars than I ever could have imagined. I'm like, dude, you better become a doctor or an actor or something because that's the only way you're getting a McLaren or a Bugatti or a, any of that stuff or a Lamborghini, you know what I mean? But I'd like to think that at some level, right up there with Marvel and Star Wars, that cars can be one of our things, you know? He's not my son, but he's he's my boy, and... He, uh, I don't know. It's, yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just, that's what cars give people, you know? That's what just doing, I know I'm talking like I'm his dad and I'm not, you know? But I, I just, there was a time where I didn't really have people to do this with, you know what I mean? People to take to a car meet and care that we're at a car meet and now it's i don't know you just see things differently when you're looking at it through the eyes of a kid it's like those cars that they draw in kindergarten that they now suddenly realize can exist that they're real they're for real you know they're out there 
So just, I don't know, take time and spend it with the people in your life and share the things you love with them and encourage them to share the things they love with you. And the rest will follow. From a purely selfish standpoint, I'm incredibly thankful for the RCR meets. Whether you came to one of our local PA meets, the New Zealand meets, if you were part of the Cove crew during our UK meet, or if we saw you in Toronto, I'm grateful for every single person who showed up. Over the course of these meets, I've met people who've changed my life, people who helped me realize things about myself and prompted me to act on those realizations to change my life for the better, to not take people in my life for granted, to learn different perspectives and to value those perspectives. I mean, these were all things I knew, but in some ways, these sorts of communities bring it out of me. Even the ones that have nothing to do with RCR, they make me feel more like myself in a weird way. I should also say that I'm incredibly thankful for the photographers we've had at our RCR meets, who kindly granted me their permission to use the footage they took for this video, because Brian and I were so swamped that we hardly had enough time to take many photos or videos of our own. But then, for an RCR meet, we're not typically there to make content. If we do, it's just a lucky happenstance. For the most part, we're just trying to meet people and say hello, say thank you, say anything. A lot of times, people apologize for taking up so much of our time without realizing that our time is there to be taken. People have been so respectful at our meets, and maybe it's a humble brag to say so, but we haven't had anybody acting out or doing burnouts or being aggressive or overly judgmental. I guess I'd better go find some wood to knock on. Oh, oh. Wait, no, no, where is it? That's the platinum. Here we go. Ow! Nice. It means so much to have people come out just to say hi. To this day, I'll never understand why anybody would want a picture with me, or why anybody would want my signature or my advice or my handshake. It'll never stop being surreal to me, but I'll never stop being thankful for the people who ask. I'll never stop being thankful for the people who care, the people who tweet that there's a recall on my mom's car and they want to make sure that she's all right, or that there's uh, some sort of natural disaster happening in the southeastern Pennsylvania area and they want to make sure Brian and I are still alive. I mean, it's weirdly touching. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. So yeah, I'll never stop being thankful for the people who care, but I'll never stop being thankful for the people who don't either, because it's the good and the bad that shape us into more complete people. And in much the same way, it's the good and the bad that inform car meets. It's exceedingly rare to have one without the other. And when the bad is bad, car meets can be downright awful, but when the good is good, it's absolutely fantastic. It ultimately comes down to you and what you feel is worth the effort of seeking out. Because any car meet runs the risk of being a mixed bag, and yet I would still argue for attending one, just to see if it's your kind of event, if it's worth its weight in weekends. And if not, that's okay. There's no requirement that this is something you have to do in order to be a car person. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you have to fulfill this ridiculous amount of criteria to become a, quote, car person, like a car guy, a car girl. Literally, the only requirement is that you like cars. You don't have to be an index of car knowledge and factoids. You don't have to be a scholar on automotive history. You don't need to drive something with a V8 or more or higher or something with X number of horsepower or that goes X number of miles per hour. You know, you don't have to drive something glamorous. You don't have to drive something ironically unglamorous. You don't even have to drive manual. There, I said it, and I don't give a shit. Like, let it go, okay? You don't have to drive manual. It's better if you do, probably, you know, just because you're experiencing more car, but 
come on, are we really going to sit around here in 2019 and gatekeep people for not being able to drive manual? You know what I mean? And we're going to then complain about how there's not really a car community anymore. Well, no, it's because people are driving perfectly fine folks away from being a part of the car community just by being douchebags and being, you know, gatekeeping. Ugh, ugh, I don't know. It's frustrating. And it doesn't have to be. The whole point of being a car person is that you enjoy cars, but they don't have to be your entire life. But you might be surprised if you add a little bit more of cars to your life through a car meet. You might be surprised at the things you discover, the people you meet, the good times that you have. Yes, this is about people. It's about cars. It's about fun. But... More than a defense of car meets, well, it's just a defense of enjoying cars on whatever terms you see fit. Just enjoy cars. Enjoy each other. Enjoy life. Thanks.